Heading to the theater to see the film version of your cherished book is basically signing up to watch someone else tinker with your imagination. Some movies rise to the challenge while others beef it, yet we continue to line up at the box office. Let's look at eight films and whether or not they pulled off the high wire act that is adaptation. The film adaptation of Ready Player One took its source material to the next level. The book was always driven by action and nostalgia, begging to be visualized, but it drug along in the beginning through nearly a hundred pages of world building. Steven Spielberg cuts to the chase, literally opening the movie with quick overhead narration about the Oasis and the state of the world. He then immediately goes into a thrilling race car sequence that's not in the book, yet simply and succinctly sets the tone for the rest of the movie. Not to mention drops in all kinds of pop culture references. The A-Team van, Bigfoot, and the Back to the Future DeLorean and the 60s Batmobile that made the book so popular. Spielberg also streamlines the missions in the movie, which were too elaborate and confusing in the book, and he strips the story of some overwrought moments like the death of a major character. Lastly, Spielberg drops in his own fan service, an action sequence set inside Kubrick's The Shining, swapping out the book's appropriation of the film War Games. All in all, the Ready Player One movie is a huge improvement on the source material, and will stand the test of time as the definitive version of the book, much in the same way the Jaws movie superseded the novel. On the opposite end of the spectrum is the latest Stephen King adaptation, The Dark Tower, the first installment in King's epic eight-book series. This film translation fails for two big reasons. In the book, Roland, the stoic gunslinger character, is relentlessly pursuing the mysterious man in black while making his way to the Dark Tower, a cosmic meeting ground of everything that holds existence together. And that's it. That's more or less all the reader gets in the way of an explanation. This makes for exciting, thoughtful reading that teases and unfolds over the course of many, many books. Movies generally have a hard time holding on to this kind of ambiguous tension, however, the film cooks up a new idea that the gunslinger is chasing the man in black to revenge his father's death and save the Dark Tower from being destroyed. These motivations are so vanilla and overdone it not only erases the viewer's complicated relationship with the characters, it also rushes the plot points of a series meant to take up to eight books worth of explaining to get to, ultimately turning what could have been an engrossing, multi-layered experience into a muddled, half-hearted popcorn flick. Savages. Oftentimes, movies simply fail to be as interesting as their book brethren. The adaptation of Red Sparrow, a spy novel written by an actual ex-CIA agent, dumbs down the main character's origin revenge plot and ignores a quirky book device of ending each chapter with the recipe of a dish or drink characters consumed. Obviously, it's a weird choice, but depending on how they might have illustrated this in the film, it could have been a fun and unique turn that separated Red Sparrow from the slog of predictable thrillers, which is how it will be remembered if it is remembered at all. You're right. It's common for auteur filmmakers to attempt their own spin on a novel, capturing more of the spirit of the book than the actual story. Movies like Apocalypse Now from Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, or Tarantino's Jackie Brown from Elmore Leonard's Rum Punch. The Coen brothers supposedly adapted The Odyssey into Oh Brother Where Art Thou after having only read it once in high school. I'm oh, good, Big Dan. This is reportedly the same approach filmmaker Alex Garland took when adapting Jeff Vandermeer's Annihilation, having read the book one time and never revisiting again while writing. In this case, it doesn't work, as Garland didn't realize the book was part of a series called the Southern Reach Trilogy and he took some liberties, especially with a completely different super trippy and vague ending that closes the loop on what could have led to two more films. Sometimes omissions and alterations are made simply for logistical purposes, but end up working out in the film's favor. In the original text of Call Me By Your Name, the characters live in an oceanfront Italian villa and take a faded climactic trip to Rome. However, the movie budget was so low they couldn't afford either of those locations. So they ended up setting the family in a secluded house and staging the trip sequence in a small country town. This gave the added effect of creating a gut-wrenching sense of intimacy and lusciousness that perfectly paralleled the story of the two characters discovering their infatuation for each other. I would kiss you if I could. The more beloved the book, the riskier it is to adapt. Wonder by R.J. Palaccio is about a young boy with a severe facial disfiguration. The novel chooses not to go into much elaborate detail on the exact nature of the disfiguration, so the reader has to visualize it for themselves. However, as a visual medium, the movie was forced to take a risk and made the definitive choice about this strong and delicate content. The filmmakers go for it, and despite creating something that is an inevitably different image than what every audience member had in mind, the nature of the beautiful story prevailed and left audiences transfixed. Walking up towards that stage, I felt like I was floating. The Little Prince most beloved material. Sometimes classic, and in particular, children's books are so personal the filmmakers try to make an intentionally alternate adaptation as a sort of preemptive defense. Much like Spike Jonze's super creative adaptation of Where the Wild Things Are, Mark Osborne, the director of The Little Prince, had a difficult task ahead of him when he set out to make that film. 
so instead of doing a purely faithful adaptation of the book, he shifts the narrative gaze from the aviator to the imagination of a completely invented neighborhood girl. The director said of this choice, quote, everybody has their own version, so you can't really make a film of the book. That's when I started to think, maybe I should put the book into somebody else's imagination. I had to create a mirror character of our experience. Someone gives the book to you, you read it, and it changes your life. Conclusion. No matter how precious and delicate the source material, no matter how often a movie has ruined our favorite books in the past, we will continue to line up for these adaptations because, for better or worse, the movies are the only mirror to our reading experience we will ever get. They're a visceral reminder of a book that once changed our lives. Remember. That's it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and make sure to do all the things, interact with it. Hey, and let us know, what's your favorite adaptation? Personally, mine is Jurassic Park. Nothing like the book, a raptor gets blown up with an RPG. That happened in the book, that was badass. But the movie's great too, has aged terrifically. Let us know what you think in the comments, however you feel. I'm Woody Tondorf, that was an essay. Enjoy, goodbye.